Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Grizzly Bear Sims YouTube channel, and welcome back to Green River, episode number three. And uh, thanks for coming back for another episode here. It's great to see you back here on the channel. I appreciate it all very, very much. So we are in the same game day that we were in for episode number two, and I just thought I would grab a screenshot really quick here. Um, just uh, right here, like this. That looks pretty good. That tells a story. And, uh, yeah, so we're in the same game day. Let me bring up the HUDs here where you guys can see where we are on our money situation and all that good kind of stuff. So we are at $18,050 in the bank. No bank loans. I've uh, not had to do that. We did have to take out a little bit of uh, money from our bank account just to buy some additional uh, fertilizer because we are, like I said before, we are busy. Uh, we're busy working our fields. Uh, and I'm, my apologies that this uh, mixing or this compost plan is such a noisy beast, but uh, it is a money maker. Those are dollar signs coming off the conveyor belt there, going into the bucket. And of course, we are putting those into our Penta DB50 tipper trailer. And um, let me just kind of jump out here really quick and let's run over here and get this guy fired up because I think that will. 84% uh, so we maybe have about one more shovel that we need to put in there and make that a nice round 50,000 liters of, um, of compost um, so we're gonna go take this up to the um, uh, to the garden center and sell this and I do need to show you about one small change that I had to make to the garden center because uh, I guess um, when the mixing station, or I'm sorry, I keep calling it a mixing station, when the compost facility was removed from the map on the version that I downloaded from the Giants Mod Hub, I'm guessing that when, when they remove the compost uh, plant, that also um, basically removed 94%, uh, so we'll try for one more bucket. That also removed the compost cell point, I suppose. And so, again, I realized that we could, and we possibly will look into this at a later point down the road, um, looking at maybe applying compost to our fields, uh, perhaps in lieu of, um, perhaps in lieu of fertilizer, at least the first stage of fertilizer, maybe. Um, but at this particular point in time, really and truthfully, we need uh, we need money more than we need to apply this as fertilizer, and I think I think the value of the the compost and there we are we're 100 percent. I believe the value of the compost is far greater to us as compost selling it at the at the garden center than it's going to essentially be worth. Um, out right there and then we will go and park our John Deere wheel loader I believe the I'm sorry I, I get I get a bit distracted when I'm around that noisy machine as I'm sure that it is noisy in your ears as well so my apologies for that but uh, again I think the compost is a little more valuable to us um, as a item that we can basically sell uh, in the garden center than it is um, as something that we can apply for the field. So let's get out of this noisy industrial area. Uh, we'll get back into our Deutzfar Warrior. I just love this tractor. This is such a, a wonderful, wonderful tractor. So 50,000 liters of black gold. We'll go right up here and turn around and head back the other way because while we are going up to the uh, garden center, there's no easy way to get there from our industrial center. We have to basically go back out and get on the main highway. And I tell you what, my chair, um, my chair has a slow leak in the hydraulic, um, in the hydraulic lift that controls the up and down mechanism. And about every, I don't know, about every three or four days, um, basically I have to, uh, I have to lift my chair back up to where 
uh, to where I like it. So if you don't mind, if you bear with me for just uh, two seconds, let me do this. All right. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, it's just uh, it just slowly loses its uh, its height. And um, anyway, so I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Uh, let's see. You guys are going to be watching. I'm not sure when you're going to actually see this episode. Um, I think you're going to be seeing this episode on Friday, uh, Friday the 18th. I'm sorry, Friday the 4th of May. Um, you, I'm going to. I haven't recorded the Taswell episode number 21 that you'll actually see uh, yesterday. That you would, that you will have seen yesterday. That is uh, forthcoming uh, for me to do. Uh, but I'm hoping to basically do that. And, uh, of course, by now you know that Midtown USA is all wrapped up. So what I had to do, initially, I guess I thought, uh, and this is just me thinking, I guess I thought that that uh, concrete bunker over there in the uh, next to those, um, next to those uh, fertilizer bags right over there, uh, was a selling uh, point for compost, but it is not. So what I had to do in order to be able to sell our compost was I had to plop down this uh, placeable sell point. And uh, it will take a lot of different things. Compost is definitely one of them, one of the things that it will take. And um, But that's the only thing that we're going to sell here will be compost. Um, we'll sell, you know, our other greens and stuff like that elsewhere. So let's see how much we get for this. I'm kind of hoping quite a bit. Um, oh, man, look at the numbers go. Um, that's cool. That's cool. 70, 80, 78,000, 60,000 dollars for that load of compost. I can't remember how much we were getting for compost over on Midtown USA. I'll have to go back and look at some of those episodes and see what, what we were getting. But that is, uh, that's pretty impressive. I, I like that very much. Okay, so that's actually, I think that will pretty much hopefully save our bacon, uh, so to speak, because um, I was really getting, I was kind of nervous about being so low on, um, on money. And I don't like to have to go to the bank if we can certainly avoid it. And um, so, yeah, so I think we're going to be okay. Now, we're not going to, again, we're not going to aggressively try to make hundreds of thousands or millions of, millions of dollars on selling compost or selling uh, silage at the BGA or those kind of things. But this at least gives us uh, an avenue to where that we can make... Um, few thousand dollars when we need it because we do have to buy we do have to continue to buy fertilizer we have to buy our seeds we don't have any seeds I checked uh, checked on that so we don't have any seeds so the only income that we really have coming in will be from the dairy that's on a daily basis we've got the upkeep of all the equipment we've got our labor because we're basically hiring labor to pretty much do all of the field work right now uh, we've got um, we've got two guys working right now. One is uh, plowing and the other one is cultivating. Uh, they were taking turns um, fertilizing, and so we basically our process is as usual. We're fertilizing, um, and then we're plowing, and then we're coming over and we're cultivating. So we will uh, fertilize and seed uh, at the same time. I believe. I believe we. I believe at least one of our seeders will allow us to fertilize at the time of seeding. If not, we'll, we'll send the uh, tractor and the fertilizer uh, around before we seed. And then that will leave us with just one additional uh, fertilization level that we'll need to do. And, of course, we will spray that um, with, our, with our sprayer. So we have a, uh, we have a trail behind uh, fertilizer spray, uh, sprayer and we have the uh, medium sized um, rear mount, well, I guess it's the large rear mounted uh, fertilized spreader, the, the granular fertilized spreader. So we are going to go up into the woods uh, here, not very, we don't have to go very far to actually get there. If I'm making the turn correctly, let's see, I think it is right here. So we're going to go up here and we're going to chop a little wood down 
course, we're going to do it. Is this the way we need to go? No, nope, we need to go over there. So we are going to chop a little bit of wood. We're going to chop some trees down. My ultimate goal really for today is to sort of replenish the 50,000 liters or so of material that we just took out of the bio get or took out of the compost facility, uh, I should say, and uh, replenish that with wood chips. So we're going to head back to uh, we're going to head back to the sawmill. Now we're not going to get the sawmill up and running today because I believe that we need some straw and we don't have any straw. Of course, now that we have a nice uh, I think we need to turn here. Now that we have $78,000 and we know that each load of compost is is worthy of of almost uh, what was that about 68 uh, no about $60,000 then we have an avenue that if we need to um, if there is some chance that we need to buy some straw or something, we can certainly do that now. So, let's see. Alright, get a hold of the Frazé here because... No, this is the... Uh, this is not the Frazé. This is the Brooks. This is the Brookson. This is a... Uh, this is a beast. This is a wood cutting, chopping beast of a piece of equipment. Uh, this was something that was available on Farm Sim 15 and I believe they just mainly converted it to uh, Farm Sim 17. But it is a fine piece of kit if you want to make a little bit of money and if you want to make the, uh, the money relatively quick. This is the piece of equipment that we need to do. Alright, so I need to share with you all, I need to explain the rules here just a little bit because we do have some rules that we have to follow uh, with regards to cutting of trees and such. Uh, we can cut trees, um, we, can, we can, if we want to, if we want to get industrious with this, we can basically clear cut this entire area, but here's the deal. Uh, we have to basically grind all the stumps or um, we will be penalized, we will be fined um, because of that. So um, I'm, we're going to get started here in just a moment. I'm going to go find out why the, uh, the cloth is slipping and I'll be right back. All right, well, the cloth was slipping because he was uh, up against a tree, and actually he was done, so that is good to go there. All right, well, it has been a little while since I have actually operated the Scorpion King, uh, believe it or not. I uh, spent so much time in it um, before. We'll turn this guy on here. Let me bring up my F1 menu just to kind of see what our cut lengths are, because we're going to want to go... We're going to want to go 8 meters on the cut length. There we go, right there. And uh, B is to turn it off. Um, X is to cut, I believe, so we don't need that anymore. All right. So if you guys remember back in the uh, back in the challenge that I was doing, the old guy farmer challenge, man, I tell you what, I cut, I cut some trees. I cut lots and lots of trees in that challenge until, uh, until basically I stopped and um, got pretty proficient at using this thing and uh, it's a lot of fun and it certainly makes um, it certainly makes light use of cutting timber uh, whether you're going to cut timber for the sawmill or you're going to basically cut timber to grind it up now i realize that we could if we wanted to uh, we could just basically cut these trees down and um, uh, and essentially run them through the the brook sun uh, as a whole tree and it would it would cut those up and make wood chips out of those pretty pretty quick and light work certainly um, but you know this is a little maybe a little more realistic plus uh, when you can use a, a piece of machinery like the scorpion king then you certainly uh, you certainly want to be able to do that uh, I certainly want to be able to do that and uh, obviously we're going to be using the Scorpion King whenever it comes time to cutting trees, uh, timber for the sawmill. And again, we'll get the sawmill running uh, relatively soon as well. Um, what I might do is, as I was saying just a few minutes ago before I had to go and save our, uh, our tractor and our cultivator, uh, we may actually put out the word and see if there's any 
local farmers that have uh, any old straw uh, that they could certainly part with. And if they do, then that would allow us to get the sawmill up and running. That is, if that sawmill is the sawmill, the type that uh, takes the, uh, the straw as fuel. It may also take wood chips as fuel. And if it takes wood, ch if it takes wood chips as fuel, uh, then obviously we do have a source of wood chips um, either here on the ground because I am running the wood chip mod because we can obviously come around with our frosé uh, should we want to and pick these wood chips up and that's even more um, material that we can put through our compost uh, facility and turn that into black gold. Gotta love it. There's somebody's uh, uh, deer stand up there. Hopefully we won't get shot at. But since it is spring, it's not uh, it's not deer season in these parts. Well, I don't know when, when deer season is in Europe, actually. Um, so if somebody knows, maybe let me know if you guys even have such a thing. I know that uh, hunting regulations and everything are different in different parts of the world. Uh, but anyway, I digress. That's a that's a different uh, different subject, maybe for a different time. These are some nice big long trees as well. I really, uh, when I was doing that challenge again, uh, anytime I would cut down a tree that would require more than uh, uh, potentially about three cuts, that was that was that was good money. You knew that you were certainly on the money at that particular point when you could get a tree and it was worth it was worth that much. Now the other advantage to uh, working over here and kind of clearing some of this area is we also have access to uh, this grass. Uh, so in the event that we need the grass for either hay or we need it for silage, um, because obviously we're going to be needing silage, we're going to need to uh, use our uh, the silage um, silo at the um, at the industrial facility to help make some silage both for our farm use as well as silage for the BGA. But also, um, just as important, um, we're going to also need um, straw pellets because we're going to be firing up our uh, pellet haul facility and making, uh, making pellets, uh, selling that down at the garden center, and maybe even using some of it for our own animals and everything because don't forget, we've got all three animal types here on this map. We've got 100... Uh, sheep, or at least that's what we started with, 100 sheep, 100 cows, and 100 pigs. And we've actually, um, we've had one pig born and one sheep born. So we are, um, we're doing pretty well there. Let me just, uh, while we're sort of thinking about it, because I certainly do not want to do a Duck Zorley. Um, my good friend Duck Zorley, if you guys are not familiar with his YouTube channel, you're certainly missing out. Uh, he often has animals um, pass away on him, so we don't want to have that happen. Uh, so we're just keeping an eye on everything. Um, so we've had one pig and one, uh, one sheep born. That's good news. Uh, obviously, we will want to allow the pigs to accumulate just a little bit um, as far as new baby pigs are concerned before we carry those to market. Um, we'll figure out how many pigs that um, that trailer holds that we have um, and that will basically um, determine the number of uh, pigs that we will wait to accumulate before we take those to market. And that's how we're going to make money on pigs. And it's not going to be a whole lot of money because obviously we've got a lot of uh, blood, sweat, tears, and everything else that goes into, um, that basically goes into the process of raising those pigs. Uh, everything from just the upkeep of the facility, the upkeep of the equipment that we have over there at that facility. Keep in mind we have a tractor over there, we have a water tanker uh, for the pig food mixing station, and we have, um, uh, what else do we have? We have a small uh, little tipper over there as well just to uh, transport the pig food from the mixing station to uh, their pig food troughs. So we've got the upkeep on that and then we've just got the upkeep on the building and uh, the electricity and all that kind of stuff and um, the veterinary bills, you know, those kind of things all add up and so 
but bottom line is there is there is profit there will be profit with the pigs it just won't be a whole lot of profit it's not going to be something that we're going to be able to uh, um, retire on that's for sure but um, yeah, that'll be okay and I just realized that I did not kick my uh, my time up so I'm going to run at 15x speed here for just a few minutes and that should balance things out we're going to cut maybe one or two more trees down and then we're going to go ahead and grind this wood up into saw uh, into uh, wood chips and we'll take these wood chips over to the compost facility and go ahead and start this processing because that way it will be ready to do something with that hopefully tomorrow maybe we'll be able to sell another load of, uh, of wood chips because that will help because uh, when we do start seeding um, I think a lot of this money is going to go bye bye pretty quick um, when we do start having to buy seeds and we'll be buying seeds at the time that we uh, that we fill our um, seeders and everything up and of course we are obviously have more we have more fertilizer to buy and we just have more labor and all that kind of stuff to also um, have to pay out it's just a you guys know you run you run your virtual farm empires you know all about it you know all about the cost of, of virtual farming certainly not cheap but the rewards are may not be high you know again we may not be able to uh, retire early from these uh, from these types of jobs but the rewards are high knowing that we're providing a service to our communities uh, a lot of folks uh, do like to buy uh, local like this because they uh, uh, they know where everything comes from and I think that's uh, that's key and if I you know come out of character just a little bit um, and just sort of say what I was talking about the other day and I'm not sure what video it was in if it was um, if it was in this uh, if it was in this series or if it was one of my other series uh, Midtown or Taswell um, but essentially you know if you get an opportunity to to uh, buy or shop at your local farmers market you're going to be so much better off for doing that simply because um, you're going to know exactly where that food uh, those fruits veggies vegetables or even uh, even meat comes from and uh, we quite enjoy my wife and I quite enjoy um, first need to unfold yeah uh, my wife and I quite enjoy going to the farmers market um, there is one that's not too far from us actually and um, they don't they don't have it every single um, they don't have it every single um, weekend, every you know, 52 weeks of the year. Um, it um, they will um, they will have it they will have it generally in the uh, late spring, summer, and fall months. And, um, it's quite good stuff. We often get our our fruits and vegetables and stuff like that there. So this is how the Brookson works, and again, as you can kind of tell, it's just a uh, it's a fast uh, wood chip destroying machine. Now, one thing I will warn you about is um, if you start looking like you're getting a bit full with your tipper, you probably want to stop because um, the issue is that uh, once it fills up, um, I think it will just continue to chew up. Uh, material all right well that is good enough right there I think 83% um, so let's go ahead and we'll fold this guy up we'll stow the pipe and we're gonna go ahead and haul this 92% uh, 47,000 liters and some, 41,000 liters and some change should probably cut down a few more trees but considering that we're coming up on about 25 minutes here by the time we reach the compost facility um, it will be time to uh, wrap this episode up and um, I'm really enjoying this map I, I, I don't know about you guys um, what your thoughts are if you have played this map or if you've seen it or if maybe you've started playing it but for whatever reason 
grew bored with it. I don't know. Um, I quite enjoy it. I think it's uh, I think it's a neat map. It's certainly a little bit of a break from the um, previous maps that we had been playing, the larger fields, the larger equipment. Both, uh, both Tazewell and Midtown USA both allowed us to utilize some really large equipment. And while this map certainly has fields that certainly shouldn't be uh, misjudged, um, there's certainly some large fields on this map. Uh, you can you can still effectively work these fields with your medium-sized equipment, or even smaller if you wanted to just take a little bit more time in doing it, but definitely uh, medium-sized equipment works well here. Um, but also, I think at the same time, hopefully we can make this turn here with this Brookson hanging out there in front of us. Oh, yeah. Uh, we knocked the sign down. That's okay. That's pretty much a trademark of mine. If there's a sign anywhere in the vicinity, I'm going to pretty much knock it down. I might even knock down a, uh, a person or two. But anyway, um, yeah, it's a it's a nice size map, nice size fields, and um, still quite open. The fields are quite open, in the sense, unlike say um, Coldboro Park Farm or Thornton Farm, where you've got you know a hedge and everything that's kind of in the way. I don't even think I don't even think the uh, the hedge and everything has collisions on it. Um, so that is kind of helpful if you enjoy playing those types of uh, those types of maps but uh, all right so here we're coming up on our industrial complex here with our compost facility our biodiesel facility and of course the biodiesel will take uh, that takes canola so we'll have to we'll be planting a field or two of canola we'll be planting a field or two of wheat because we need wheat for our pig mixing uh, station and of course we need um, of course we need um, uh, sugar beets as well for the pig mixing station so we will have uh, one field of sugar beets I'll show you the field that I'm planning on using for sugar beets field number 14 over in the far left hand side that long skinny field I figured that would make a good field for the sugar beets um, and you know me, folks, I can't back and talk, so let me be quiet here for just a moment. Well, there we go. Almost 50,000 liters of wood chips went back into the compost facility to more or less replenish what we uh, took out of there. And um, let's just head on back to the main farm, or what I refer to as the main farm, and let's check on the progress of the plumbers and see how much progress they've made. They're not scheduled to be done until uh, 4 or 5 o'clock this afternoon, but maybe they've made a little bit of progress. And if they have, that will obviously be good news for us uh, because we're probably going to need to give our animals some water before the end of today. Uh, so we'll obviously get to test out those faucets, those hydrants, and see how they work. Now, the other cool thing about that mod, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not aware, is that if um, you enable it to do so, it will allow the water troughs to be filled by the rainwater, which is something that I've often talked about. I think I even used to talk about this back in the Farm Sim 15 days, about how that um, I sort of felt that it would be nice if our water troughs um, reacted to rainwater. In other words, if they filled up um, either partially or all the way, if there was enough rain that, that actually fell. Because in the real world, if you've got a water trough that is setting outside, uh, not covered and everything, you're going to obviously, if you have rain, that rain is going to uh, fall into that water trough and it's going to fill it up, right? That's how it works. Well, um, with this mod, you can actually, that is a setting that you can enable or disable. 
and I did enable it, so we will take advantage of that. If we get rain, then we'll, we'll get a little bit of a benefit of having rainwater put in there. So let's, uh, instead of hurtling the fence, let's open it up like normal folks and let it slap us in the face. So there's still a few pieces of pipe here, a valve. Looks like they're working on getting the uh, stand there set up. This is where we will actually turn the water on from that point and then the water flows uh, underground into these pipes um, where it will pour water into the trough. That is just fantastic. I cannot wait um, to have this uh, have this mod functionality uh, available to us. We'll just go ahead and hurdle this fence here and it looks like they've made pretty good progress here. So I'm guessing they may be at lunch uh, because I don't see them around but you know I'm sure that they will get the work done uh, on time and hopefully on budget because boy uh, do we need them to be certainly on budget um, so there we go folks uh, there's episode three pretty much in the um, in the can and let's go ahead and go over here and grab some of our eggs now I will make a decision as to whether or not we come back for this game day or maybe where I will uh, go ahead and work the rest of this game day off camera I really think the only thing that I, I really need to accomplish this game day is maybe get one more field plowed and perhaps cultivated um, that way because if the weather let's just take a look at our weather forecast right quick here I know we do have rain tomorrow and it's going to be a little bit cooler day so I don't know if we can expect our soil temperatures to come up much in the next day but even if it's raining we can still we can cut some more timber um, I'll look into what our requirements are for getting the sawmill running if it'll take wood chips we'll give it wood chips if it needs straw uh, we'll buy some straw we'll, we'll find some straw somewhere around the area and we'll get that up and going in the next game day or so because I'd like to be able to sell some of those pallets um, at, at some point in the near future and um, our soil temperature obviously will come up. Let's just take a look at our, se our seasons menu. We're not going to plant grass. So, you know, historically we have uh, sort of always planted grass and we've kind of done that on the first game day. We're not going to need to do that. So really, we're looking for 41. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for 41 degree soil temperature. And uh, of course, we could go ahead and plant today if we wanted to. Um, the seeds wouldn't germinate until that gets there but you know me I like to play it a little bit safe and I will wait until the soil temperature comes on up to 41 degrees and just going back here one more time uh, we're going to be planting wheat and canola so those are 41 uh, we're going to be planting um, soybeans um, no I'm sorry sugar beets that's 41 as well so we can go ahead and put our soy our sugar beets in we're also going to do some corn that's at 50 and possibly some soybeans and sunflower so there we go those are the magic numbers that we're looking for well ladies and gentlemen I have rambled on long enough I'm going to mark my spreadsheet here that I've got episode number three recorded that's how I kind of keep up with things I hope you are enjoying um, this series I'm certainly enjoying bringing it to you uh, it's a really lovely map I cannot say enough I know I often say this about the maps I play but it just happens to be the way it is I just happen to really enjoy uh, most of the maps that that I do choose to play I do enjoy them so ladies and gentlemen really without any further um, ado let's go ahead and wrap this up I will say as I always do please please take good care of yourselves and also of each other and everyone else around you and I'm going to head back on up to the wood area the sawmill area and drop off this brook sun and we'll probably do a little bit more plowing off camera and we'll come back together either in this game day or maybe um, in the end or the beginning of the next game day game day number three uh, for more action here on Green River until then take care of yourself and I'll see you down the road God bless you all bye bye